Hi, just about to put together a uh, digital to analog converter and an analog to digital converter. I've already uh, mounted my digital to analog converter onto a header similar to the one that you're looking at in the camera right now. If I just bring this other one into view. So this one is the uh, digital to analog converter. It's a D8574 from uh, Texas Instruments and it's a 16-bit quad channel digital to analog converter. And what I want to do is actually put together a 24-bit um, analog to digital converter for use with the power supply project. So I thought that I would um, share the process of trying to um, solder this. As you can see, it's quite small. The pitch is 0.65 millimeter for the uh, legs of the chip. And um, I haven't soldered it on yet. Right now, it's just the chip is just sitting on top of the carrier. This is one of those uh, little um, TSOP adapters to um, dip adapters so that I can put it on a breadboard. And what you see here is I have to solder, basically solder these all these pins onto the tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out the way. I need to put a bit of solder on there first. So um, I'm going to get my uh, solder paste out and just apply a little bit. And then we're going to use the hot air gun to um, make everything nicely flow together. Hopefully that'll make a nice joint. So let me just uh, go get the solder on. So now I'm going to try and put the solder paste on. I'm not sure how nice it's going to go on. As you can see, my uh, needle here is quite big relative to the solder. Okay, so I've got solder paste on as best I can under the camera. Um, it's a little bit messy around the edges, but hopefully I'll be able to clean that up once the uh, chip is uh, in place and uh, been soldered in. So the next thing is to get the chip sitting on top of the pads almost as close as I can. Um, everything else should clean up once this has been reflowed. So I've just got to align this up nicely. Make sure it's close. It doesn't have to be 100%, but it has to be close. And of course, I'll have to be careful while this is uh, being heated with the hot air gun to make sure it does not uh, get blown out of position either, because that can quite easily happen. All right, so that looks like it's reasonably, oops. Looks like it's reasonably lined up on the pads from what I can see. I think it needs a, just a bit of help on that side. Okay, that looks reasonably good. So now I'll get the hot air gun and we'll try and heat this without blowing it. I'm going to move the camera a little bit to an angle. Hopefully I'll be able to get it to still focus just so that I can get the hot air gun directly above it so that it doesn't try and move the chip while I'm um, heating it. So I'm just refocusing this manually because the macro lens is quite close. That's not too bad. Let's see what we can do. Okay, we've got some heat coming on here now. You can see some of the solder balls are already starting to form. I've got this sitting on a piece of aluminum to prevent it melting my bench. So that's one side. Let's go get a bit of work done on the other side. See the solder and the flux is nicely doing its job there. That looks really good. And just make sure the other side is good. All the pads look nicely lined up now. So as you can see, even though I managed to blow it a little bit, I was able to put it back in place. Okay, let's let that cool down. Take the hot air away. And that actually doesn't look too bad at all. I've uh, got one of these little there um, alcohol wipes that you get from the pharmacy for like wounds and stuff like that. And the nice thing about these is that the um, they make very, very good cleanup wipes because they'll remove the flux residue and things like this. Cools down pretty quick, but you don't want to make sure you don't have too much heat on it because yeah, it is very, very small and therefore could exceed its um, temperature ratings. The alcohol's just evaporating off there. And that doesn't look too bad a job. Let me just see if I can 
zoom in a little bit closer refocus I'm gonna move it right under the camera this time so we have a square look at it so I'm just uh, manually adjusting the height of the camera because the focal length is so tight that even the depth of the chip is enough to change it so I'm just focusing you can see that on the left side there it's just marginally off but none of the pads are shorted and they're all on the pad which is what's important right hand side there is a lot better and they look like they've all soldered nicely so I think we're good to go now we're just going to put the outer pads on uh, sorry the um, 0.1 inch pitch dip connectors and then we can hook it up to a Arduino or a Raspberry Pi and see what we can do with this thing okay now we just got a solder in the 0.1 inch pitch headers along each side and uh, and we'll be ready to plug it into a piece of breadboard so I'm using a 0.5 millimeter um, solder here it's a leaded solder but it will do the job nicely so again doing this under the camera so forgive me if I'm a little bit shaky and not seeing what I'm doing properly just adjust things a little bit so I can get in better When you're soldering, always put the soldering iron on one side of the joint and apply the solder from the other. That way, when it flows, you know it's flow flowing into the joint properly. Just want to quickly show you the um, dip package layout because uh, I've just completed wiring it up to my Arduino Uno, which is what I'm going to use for my test platform for the moment. Uh, we will try it with some other microcontrollers later on, but for this video, we're just going to use the Uno. And what you can see here is obviously it's a 16 pin package. Um, and it's using SPI, so you need the uh, clock, a chip select, you need the data in, which is effectively the MOSI, so uh, master out, sir, uh, slave in, connected, and the master in, slave out, connected. The data ready, you can, um, it's an output to the Arduino, so that when, because this is an analog to digital converter, you set it off doing some conversions and once the conversion is complete it will pull the data ready line low to let you know that the conversion is done and, and ready for you. Um, we have effectively uh, four inputs. You have AN0, AN1, AN2 and AN3. And if you notice that AN3 and AN0 are also labeled ref N1 and ref P1. That's reference positive one and reference negative one. This allows you to have a um, secondary reference input to the A to D converter so that you could switch between two re different references if you wanted to. At the bottom of the chip you've got ref N0 and ref P0 which is the positive and the negative standard reference inputs if you configure it to use an external reference. Uh, to start with, we're going to use an internal reference, which is the 2.048 volts reference. And what we'll do um, after we've done a little bit of testing of that is we'll um, see about hooking up an external reference. I've got an, a ref 2 which is a precision 5 volt reference on the board and wired up as well already. Um, it, right now it's hooked up to a different chip. So anyway, this is the um, A to D converter we're using, four channel. Now, in a power supply circuit, of course, um, I would use one of these for each um, major power supply unit. So if we're doing a dual channel, channel power supply, I'd have one of these for channel A and one for channel B. Now, you might ask, well, you could do both of them with the one because you've got four inputs. But what I want to do with my power supply is I want to have differential uh, inputs. If you remember when we were talking going through current sensing and various other things uh, as you increase the current through your load and it goes through the low side sense resistor that actually elevates the uh, the basically the zero volt line of your load uh, slightly it may only be 50 or 100 millivolts but if you want to make this thing very accurate you want to try and compensate for that um, the other reason as well is that the voltage um, 
sensing, what you can do is you can actually wire it up such that you could even have remote sensing for the volts as well if you wanted to, or at least take the sense wires all the way to the terminals on the front of the power supply. That way you eliminate pretty much all of your wiring because the sense uh, current or the sense input basically to the um, A to D is extremely high impedance so it will have negligible impact on any current readings and things. So you take advantage of that with the differential such that you can eliminate your wiring, you eliminate the effects of your um, current shunt sensing, etc. And that means it really reduces you down to a uh, two-channel um, A to D converter because you're using two inputs for the differential uh, times two. So the soldering is done. Before we go to the um, prototyping board, what I want to do is just quickly show you a little bit on the data sheet of what we've got here. So, of course, it's an ADS1220. It's in a uh, surface mount 16-pin package. And uh, a few of the things we need to make note of here is the fact that it can work on anything from 2.3 to 5.5 volts. Uh, you can program the gain anything from uh, 1 to 1 to 128 times on the gain. It doesn't have a dividing uh, capability, but that's okay for what we're doing right now. Uh, we're just going to test this thing out. I do have another chip, but I'm waiting for some headers to arrive. It might be a few weeks before the headers get here, which actually is a pro programmable gain uh, amplifier. So it can actually divide as well as multiply and allows you to feed in plus or minus 40 volts, which is going to be ideal for our power supply project. And what I'll do is I'll put that in front of the um, HD converter. We want uh, 50 hertz, 60 hertz rejection, which is a great feature to have. Uh, so if you're doing 20 samples per, section, per second, which is more than enough for a power supply project like we're doing, then you can turn on um, built-in uh, 50 hertz and 60 hertz ripple rejection. We've got the multiplexer on the input. Remember I mentioned it's got four analog inputs, analog input 0, 1, 2, and 3. Two of those can also be reference voltage inputs if you want them to be. It does have the programmable gain amplifier built into it. It's got an internal reference, but you can also multiplex an external reference, which we'll try out later on. Uh, it's got the 24-bit Delta Sigma analog to digital converter. Uh, digital filter and spy interfaces, uh, precision temperature sensor, and a built-in oscillator. You know, we're going to have this on a breadboard, so uh, there's going to be a little bit of extra noise and things like that that we're going to experience. And, uh, you know, we're not having anything remotely like input guard traces or anything like that to prevent noise getting into this thing. And if you do the math on 24-bit, um, uh, on a 5 volt range, you're well into the nanovolts uh, range for sensitivity of this thing per count. And of course, you know, you even get your hands near it and things like that, you're going to be causing some interference. So whilst I don't think we will get accuracy or highly stable down into the low microvolt ranges, um, it will be very interesting to see how well this thing be performs uh, in our uh, power supply simulation here. We've already covered off the REF02, which is a 5 volt precision uh, reference chip that we've used in the previous videos. So I'm not going to worry about that. But what we do have on here uh, is also I'm including a digital to analog converter. So I have a quad 16 bit low power uh, voltage output with an I2C interface. Uh, digital to analog converter, I um, made this one up onto a uh, header probably a couple of months ago, and I've never really played with it yet. It's only 16-bit. It's not 24-bit uh, like the ADCs are. Uh, it uses an I2C interface, so you only need uh, the two wires on it. Again, it can work on anything from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. Quick block diagram of the chip, so you've got your uh, computer interface, you've got your addressing lines. There's actually four addressing lines on here, but externally the chip only has two. Uh, internally, effectively, once you talk to the control register, you can sub-address these chips so that you can actually have, I think, 16 of the chips with four channels each, meaning you could effectively have a total of um, 64 channels if you wanted to. So you've got four outputs. Um, they also have power down logic, so that, and you can either have it 
uh, open circuit, 1K pull down, uh, 100K pull down, I think, and things like that. And you've got uh, buffer amplifiers and the output as well. The one thing I like about these Texas Instruments chips too is they often um, configure them such that you don't have your control logic tracks interfering with your uh, analog output. So if you look at this, all of the, um, the, the I2C input, the uh, address settings, everything else are all on the right hand side of the chip here. And your uh, four analog outputs, your voltage references are all on the left hand side of the chip. So you should be able to keep your digital side and your analog side completely separate from each other. Anyway, that's the two chips that are going to be uh, hooked up today. And um, let's uh, swing around now and have a look at the board. To make life easy for myself, um, because these chips are really, really small and hard to read, I've actually put some little sticky labels on each of the boards to tell me what the chip is. And uh, that's the Refo 2 I put in the middle, so it's actually in close proximity to both of these. So the Refo 2 actually requires an 8 to um, about 30 odd volt power supply. So uh, what I've done is I've hooked it up to a 12 volt adapter, which is this uh, wire that's flying off over the side here. Um, the, the one you saw me soldering up before here is uh, hooked up to the, I2, sorry, the SPI interface with all these wires flying out. We've got the uh, chip select, S, uh, MOSI, MISO, uh, the clock, and the ready line all feeding across to the Arduino Uno. On the um, other chip, which is the digital to analog converter, this is only using two wires. The third one is not connected right now. I've just got it grounded. That's actually a latch. So that if you're doing external synchronization, you can have all of the outputs of a number of chips uh, enabled for any new updates uh, to be synchronized together to let them go out. Uh, all the address lines, uh, you can see all these yellow jumpers here, are all tied to zero to keep the address um, at its base level. And the outputs are on this side. So I've got an oscilloscope hooked up to one of the outputs right now, and I've got um, nothing else hooked to the other ones. The uh, REF02 here, um, I've got the 5 volt reference feeding out to pin 3 of the uh, DAC so that it provides a stable 5 volt reference. I've also got a um, little 10 turn potentiometer this time hooked in. And what I've done is the VREF is feeding the high end, uh, the low end goes to ground, and the wiper I have feeding into channel one of the analog to digital converter, which is basically sitting right here. And I'm using in differential mode. So the other side right now, I've just got plugged into the zero volt rail, uh, just so that it gets a solid ground reference. Uh, you really don't want these floating around, otherwise it would cause you issues. So with the, the, the REFO2 is not yet hooked into the uh, A to D converter as a stable reference. So my maximum input right now uh, for the A to D converter is only going to be 2.048 volts, not 5 volts. So uh, once we've played around with the uh, basic internal one, we'll look at reprogramming uh, or adjusting the program so that we can actually tell it to use an external VREF and set it to be uh, 5 volts and then we'll get a, a more dynamic range for the pot and uh, the readings and everything. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, the two scope probes that you see hooked up here I've actually got uh, connected to my oscilloscope so that we can do some I2C or SPI uh, debugging as necessary. Right now it's hooked up to the I2C bus. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, all the capacitors and everything else that you see scattered around here, they're just providing uh, decoupling for the supplies because breadboards are notoriously noisy if you don't have a few caps thrown in here and there. Uh, and even with that, they're still going to be noisy, which is what I was saying before. Uh, oh, the other thing of note, of course, uh, which I talked about in the last video, was on the uh, I2C, you do need to have these uh, at least a 10K pull-up on the uh, data and the clock line for it to work properly. Otherwise, uh, it's you know even with these short wires, it's quite capacitive and it would not necessarily work very reliably. So we've got those plugged in there as well. And I think that pretty much covers it. So what I'm going to show you now is the first thing we'll play with is to get the um, analog to digital converter working. Okay, and then we'll try and get them both running and uh, we'll, we'll monitor the output. In another video, what I'm going to do is hook this up to some kind of uh, 
LCD display so that we can uh, use it almost as the basis of a control system for our power supply. Uh, for the sake of just doing this demonstration here, um, I'm just going to use the uh, serial.write and serial.print commands from the uh, Arduino to just put it to a console so that we can see what's happening for the uh, A to D converter. And when we do the D to A converter, we'll just have a uh, create some kind of loop and we'll stick my oscilloscope and or uh, my Agilent um, multimeter on the analog output so we can measure what's going on there. All right, so anyway, let's get this thing um, powered up and let's start looking at some sketches to make this thing work. Okay, just did a bit of Googling and what I found is there is a library from um, Proto Central uh, for the ADS-1220. It looks pretty basic and uh, even the name of the library when you go in here, it's uh, labeled as basic. So that's what I've just got loaded and what you'll see here is uh, it includes its own library uh, there's a spy.h, of course, which you need to talk out. A um, few definitions for setting the values uh, during operation. So our programmable gain amplifier is set to 1. Uh, we're just defining the fact that we're using a 2.048 volt voltage reference. And now we're calculating, these next two stages actually calculate the uh, volts per count and things for the A to D converter so that we can uh, convert our 24-bit value into some real um, thing like either volts or current or something like that. In this case, it's going to be volts. Uh, a few placeholders for things like a buffer for the data that's being read, uh, a few other volatile uh, bits and bytes for uh, doing some calculations. So uh, next thing here is we're initializing the uh, ADS-1220 uh, through the library. Uh, setting the pin mode for the chip select and we're setting the pin mode for the ready. Remember what I said for the AD converter, when you uh, start it doing a conversion, one of the outputs actually will uh, go low once it's ready for reading. So that's what this second one is. Um, we start the um, program and then we go into a loop here. So the loop is basically, um, you've got a few variables to start with. We're doing a data read from the ADS-1220. Now this is quad channel, and as you can see already, um, this has not allowed me to set what channel I'm using or anything. So it's probably just going to be using a single channel of the AD converter. Now for the sake of seeing if this is working and to do some tests about uh, accuracy and things like that, then that probably should be just fine. Um, so it's doing a, uh, a read uh, if ADS-1220 new data available. So did we get a reading? Because uh, obviously if you try and read when there's no conversion, uh, you're going to get some kind of garbage or nothing at all uh, out from it. And if you do have data, then it takes the buffers. These are, this is the buffer that we saw above um, and basically moves it into four, three separate variables and does a little bit of bit manipulation to get it into a single 24-bit uh, value so that you can use it to calculate the uh, true input to this in something that you would use for your application, which is in our case is volts. Um, so a little bit of math here based on the um, input value and the volts full-scale resolution, uh, et cetera, to convert our count which is 24 bits, so the maximum that would go to would be um, F, 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 F. So, yeah, 24 bits. Uh, this is going to convert it into a float in what it says is millivolts, and because it's float, it's going to be millivolts with a decimal, uh, some decimal places, which will take us into the microvolts, uh, or that's what I'm assuming here. Uh, delay for the loop, print the output, and what else have we got here? Looks like some additional debug things that have been commented out, and that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, it's not even allowing me to set the address, so it's probably assuming that uh, the chip is configured in a specific way, which I had a look at the Proto Central ADS1220 um, code, and um, basically, actually, you know what? I'm just going to load it up and show you. It's easier than just telling you. Okay, this is the ADS1220 header file. Um, so if I can make it a little bit bigger to see. Yeah, there we go. So what we have here is um, basically the 
uh, restart command, a start command for the HD converter. Uh, looking at the data sheet, it says you need to, the first thing you should do to it is send a reset command to it to make sure everything's initialized properly inside the chip. Um, some configurations, looks like for these samples per second. Uh, selections, it's internal addresses, there's four registers for configuring this thing. Um, program with gain amplifier, 1 through 128. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, so here it is. The uh, chip select pin has been hard coded effectively to pin 7. It would be easy enough to change that if you wanted to. And the ready pin is on pin 6. So these were being referenced before, um, but of course they're in, in the header here. Um, the commands that we have available to us, um, where's the public ones? These are the public ones. Yep, these are the public. So new data available, looks like it's just a UN8. Uh, initialization, spy start, spy reset, um, write register, read register, read data, get configuration register, uh, program with gain amplifier on and off, continuous conversion mode, single shot mode, uh, set the data rate and set the programmable gain amplifier. So nothing in there that actually lets you pick which A to D converter you're using or anything like that. So very basic. Once I've played around with this, um, I will uh, set about writing a more complete library so that you can pick which channel and uh, things like that. So, but anyway, for now this should do. Um, let's go back to the Arduino code and we'll upload that. So just compiling and uploaded so 5.594 17% program space out of 32k 275 bytes of um, global variable so 13% of that so we got plenty of room for other things so that's now uploaded and the light on the Arduino Uno is busy flickering away nicely as you can see there which means it's trying to send things up the serial port so um, hopefully that means that things are working properly Let's get back to here and we'll fire up the uh, serial console. I guess pretty much immediately it shows us that uh, things are working fine. I'm just going to power up my multimeter and hook it into the same place. Um, that's reading exactly 1.000. Uh, a little bit earlier I actually hooked up my meter and was playing around with the um, 10 turn pot. So that basically just confirms that it's still where I left it. But um, let's see how accurate this is compared to my meter. So I'm just hooking up the meter now. So you can see there though, this is actually very, very um, stable. These are millivolts. So you've got uh, one, basically 1000 millivolts. So that's one millivolt. And then you've got microvolts here. So it's 58, 59. It's only drifting by uh, 10 or 20 microvolts maximum um, on that, which, you know, it's, it's a 24 bit a to D converter and of course we're not showing 24 bits here because that would go down into the nanovolts but really for a power supply you know th these chips are probably uh, 10 or 15 dollars each maybe if you're buying them one off um, I'd have to go and check and I'll see if I can post some links in when I put the video up but um, you know when you want this kind of accurate if you want this kind of accuracy then uh, obviously it comes at a slight price uh, th these things don't have speed, which is why the price is still going to stay low. But because we're not trying to digitize audio or you know create an oscilloscope or something like that, then uh, that's you know more than enough for what we're doing here. So let me just swing around here, and there's the meter. So it's 0.9999. So within 0.02 percent of one volt on there. Um, and I know my meters, they're fairly new, so they're uh, definitely within calibration. And here is the um, A to D converter. So I'm reading three nines, four nines on my meter, and we're getting uh, 1.3059. So these are within, you know, point, fractions of a percent of each other, which I think, you know, for a power supply, that's pretty awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I will see if I can actually let me see if I can sit my meter next to the so I think you can now see there that we've got um, one volt up here so I'm just going to adjust the 10 turn pot now um, to say two volts just to see 
how it compares near the top end of the uh, ADD converter. So at 204A, you can see I've gone over 204A and the ADD converter stopped at 204A on its input because that's the top of the reference. So we just back it back down to 2 volts. Now this is plus and minus as well. So even though it's a 24-bit uh, analog to digital converter, what you really have is 23 bits because the most significant bit is actually a polarity, like a sine bit. So um, you're not actually going to get that. You're actually going to go from minus 2048 to plus 2048 um, volts. So I've set exactly 2.000 uh, one volts on my DMM there and you can see here it's reading uh, 2.0015 so 1.5 millivolts up on uh, 2 volts that's definitely well within 0.1% um, accuracy and um, you know for an 8 and I haven't trimmed this or anything so you know if I uh, maybe if I crank this right down so that's reading what one and a half millivolts high roughly so if I go all the way to zero or the lowest end we'll see what offset there is so that's uh, my pot is as low as it can go right now so I've gone down to eight and a half millivolts on the multimeter and I've got eight point four actually it's uh, pretty act pretty close there so uh, I can't really grumble at that one's reading eight point four and the other one is reading uh, well, 8.4 as well. So at the bottom end, they're both reading the same thing. Um, so I would say that that's probably um, now down to uh, maybe slight nonlinearity of the uh, analog to digital converter. Um, but I mean, you know, my Agilent is not more accurate than what we're trying to measure anyway. You know, the technically the A to D converter at 24 bits is more accurate than my Agilent uh, U1273A, so it would be foolish of me to say which one at the high end is actually more accurate. Um, but as I say, I haven't trimmed it or anything like that for the uh, volt precision voltage reference. So there we go. So that's reading 1.50000 on the uh, ADD converter and 1.4989. So again, you know, they're within a fraction of a percent. Uh, which is more than enough for um, anything we would want to do for our power supply. You know, if you're up in the uh, 20 volts and you're trying to mess around with one millivolt or less in the accuracy, well, you know, maybe we need to uh, be building something slightly different. Anyway, uh, looks like uh, that uh, chip didn't get destroyed in my messing around trying to uh, hot air solder it onto the header, and it seems to be working fine, and I'm actually quite pleased that... Uh, it worked first time as well. So uh, let's go look at the D to A converter because obviously with our power supply, if we want to automate this, we want to be able to drive the um, outputs using the microcontroller. And of course that requires a digital to analog converter. I mean, you could use PWM as well, but then you would have to have smoothing circuitry and various other things to convert the PWM into a true analog signal. Uh, using a relatively low cost 16 bit D to A converter, and in this case it's a quad channel. You really only need two for this, but this one has four um, for the sake of the video. Um, would be all you need, and 16 bits is still very, very accurate for a power supply. Um, anyway, let's go and see what we can do for software for that.